Our title today, Mingling Compromise. Mingling Compromise. How many of us compromise daily? There's some strong stuff going on out there. We're going to re read another verse or two or three. Revelation 6, 12 through 17. And actually, I think I put every verse on PowerPoint today. So let's read through these real quick. Revelation 6, 12 through 17. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell upon, upon the earth, as a fig tree casteth her ultimate untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll, when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bond man, and free, every free man hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains. And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? We ask ourselves, who will be able to stand? There are four signs in these scriptures right here. And we'll go through them real quick. As you see this, I brought up on the screen, 1755 Lisbon earthquake. Where's Lisbon? Portugal. Portugal. We don't need to read all this. I'm just bringing up some signs that were in the scriptures we just read in Revelation 6 through 12. But we can. 1755. Read those Spending in blue. To read. Huh? I would read that. I got a lot, lot today in, in these PowerPoint slides, so but we will. These signs were witnessed before the opening of the 19th century. All this is to make a point today of the investigative judgment. Okay. In fulfillment of this prophecy, there occurred in the year 1755 the most terrible earthquake that has ever been recorded even to this day though commonly known as the earthquake of Lisbon it extended to the greater part of Europe Africa and America it was left in Gre it was felt in Greenland West Indies islands of Madeira in Norway Sweden Great Britain Ireland it pervaded an extent of not less than four million square miles in Africa, the shock was almost as severe as it was in Europe. A great part of Algiers was destroyed a short distance from Morocco. A village containing eight or 10,000 inhabitants was swallowed up. A vast wave swept over the coast of Spain and Africa, engulfing cities and causing great destruction. 1755, November 1st, I believe it was. The next sign, well, there's more information on the Lisbon earthquake. We can read it too. The shock of the earthquake was instantly followed by the fall of every church and convent, almost all the large public buildings and more than one-fourth of the houses. The earthquake happened on a holy day when the churches and convents were full of people, very few of whom escaped. Skip to the blue. Unfortunately, many ran to the churches for protection. But in vain was the sacrament exposed. In vain did the poor churches embrace the altars, images, priests, and people were bur buried in one common ruin. And it has been estimated that 90,000 persons lost their lives on that fatal day. Imagine if something like that happened today. It would be a lot more than 90,000. got things happening to them. Yeah. But to the extreme of that earthquake, it would be a lot more than 90,000. The world was populated then. We're having our troubles in America. Yes, we are. You'll see some of that today, too. May 19, 1780, midnight at midday. Sun grew dark. 
I guess I'll read this one too. Almost if not altogether alone as the most mysterious and as yet unexplained phenomenon of its kind. Stands the dark day of May 19, 1780. A most unaccountable darkening of the whole visible heavens and atmosphere in New England. That the darkness was not due to an eclipse. It was evident from the fact that the moon was then nearly full. It was not caused by clouds of the thickness of the atmosphere, for in the same localities where the darkness extended, the sky was so clear that the stars could be seen. Concerning the inability of science to assign a satisfactory cause for this manifestation, Frederick William Herschel, Herschel the astronomer, declares, the dark day in North America was one of the most, one of those wonderful phenomena of nature which philosophy is at a loss to explain. And there's another scan of the stars through the sky that bright day when the stars fell. Now I gotta take my time because I gotta cross this back over to power to, to me. All right, are we up here? I guess that works, right? So what is the next great event under the sixth seal to happen? Earthquake. Return of our Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, that's the biggest, greatest event that will happen. Why would there be a cry? Why would there be a cry from these unrepentant sinners? A question of the last verse we read. Who can stand? Who can stand? Because everybody else will hide their face in the cleaves of the rock. What must have transpired in heaven before Jesus is about to pour out his wrath? What, what has got to transpire? Things have got to happen. But what happened then, right after those signs, destructions? As we know, with Seventh day Adventist, right after those signs, shortly after, they realized that Christ went into the most holy place. Right? Investigative judge judgment began. So what about when Jesus, before he comes, what do you think will happen? If those things happen before the investigative judgment, what will happen just prior to his second coming? Ask yourself that. So just before or when the investigative judgment comes to a close, and all decisions and judgments have been finalized and made complete. So if these things happen before investigative judgment started, so there's going to be some things going to happen before investigative judgment ends, and as they come to a close. And that's where we're going today. Revelation 6 is showing us calamities and then the opening of the investigative judgment, which I mentioned. So are we at the beginning or the end of investigative, investigative judgment? Where are we now today? We're at the end. So since calamities in nature shows the beginning, which I mentioned, there's going to be calamities as we're having now, Scott mentioned going to be some more and nothing's really been as severe as that great earthquake there's things coming things are happening some bigger things coming so when investigative judgment is coming to a close as we see these things so wonder if this is making any sense at all Revelation 6 17 says who shall be able to stand We ask ourselves who? And we're going to answer that too. 
Who will build this thing? Investigative judgment started October 22nd, 1844. And I went through all this. I made notes and I kind of came out of my steps in my notes here, but before this date or after were the four signs. October 22nd, 1844. They were before. So there will be others before the close. The opening of investigative judgment and closing of investigative judgment. Calamities. So what is he trying to tell us? So what about the question? Unrepented sinners is the answer. Who will be able to stand? These unrepented sinners are asking this question. Who will be able to stand? So first, something must be enforced before God pours out His wrath. The Sunday law. The Sunday law. If you, if, if you keep up with world news, you can't help but see what's coming and what's happening. But you've got to keep up with the Europe news as well and not just American news. Because things are happening over there right now. It's just push. It's slowly. I ain't gonna say slowly because it's gonna be moving pretty fast. Coming to our our country. It's already pretty close. We'll see that in a minute too. Sunday law will come, and people are forced to worship, just as the three Hebrew boys were forced in Daniel. Worship that statue we're talking about. They wouldn't bow. They were thrown in the fiery furnace, right? They wouldn't bow. Things are coming. Then the books God will close and pour out His wrath at that time. So before I move any farther, because that was just kind of a highlight, so I can get into more details in just a minute, let's say a quick prayer for the message today because that's going to get pretty deep fellas Father God today it's a strong message it's a message about current events and your word and how they make sense and come together to tell us where we are in the time frame of this world so may your words fill this room today and fill my soul to be expressed straight from the throne of God. In the name of your only begotten Son, I pray. Amen. So who shall be able to stand? Revelation 17.3. I mean 7.3, I'm sorry. Revelation 7.3. It lets me click on this. Revelation 7.3. Have I been on the PowerPoint the whole time? All right, there you are. Y'all are going to see me now. Was I up there or was I have PowerPoint presentation up there? I was? Okay. I'm switching to PowerPoint now so I can get the verses up there for everybody. No, no, no. Revelation 7, 3. Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed, we have sealed, the servants of our God in their foreheads. So who shall be able to stand? Those that have been sealed. They will be able to stand in the return of Jesus Christ, our Lord. In their foreheads, we can get into talking about the 144,000, but that is not the subject today. Not the 144,000. We're not talking about those today, other than the fact they will be able to stand. We're going deeper today. 2 Timothy 2.19. Whoop. He passed one up. I got, I got Revelation 14.1. 
And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount of Sion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. So who will be able to stand? 144,000. All right, 2 Timothy 2, 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So those that have departed from iniquity, they will be able to stand. Have the Father's name in their forehead. Some of this is repeat, and I don't want to get into that. Luke, Luke 21 and 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon. What did we just read about these signs? The earthquake and the sun and the moon and the darkness. And in the stars that fell and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity and the sea and the waves roaring. These are signs. There were signs before. Now there will be signs of the same before he returns. Before the investigative judgment and the closing of investigative judgment. And what do we see? Sea and waves in Scripture? In prophecy? Sea and waves? Water? What are water? What is water? What is a sea? What is waves in prophecy in the book? People. It is people. People. When you talk about seas and waves roaring, people. Got it, you know, scripture's there. <clears throat> this is just a question, kind of make note of. What are the scriptures that brings us to the October 22nd, 1844 date? For the opening of the investigative judgment. What are they? Got Daniel 8, 14, which is the 2300 days. Then we got Leviticus 23, verses 25 through 29. And that's about the atonement. So where did the high priest go at the one day a year at atonement? The most holy place. We're going to move into the climate change as well. Luke 21, 25 through 28, we'll read it all. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud through power, with power and great glory. And when these things began to come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. It's all about the climate and environment, right? Think about it, all these things happening. I don't want to get my slides ahead of myself. Psalms 40, verse 12, For innumerable evils have compassed me about. Mine iniquities have taken hold upon me so that I am not able to look up. So who can't look up? They are more than the hairs of mine head, therefore my heart faileth me. Who's going to be running and hiding? Those that could not give up those iniquities of their life. And they know it. thing is, they know it. They just don't want to give it up. I'm going to show a lot of pictures. Y'all going to see my face a lot today. Moving into the climate change, like I said. The Green New Deal. Current events. Why the whole world needs a Green New Deal? Why the whole world needs that Green New Deal? Why do they need it? Climate change. This just happened. May 24, 2019. Students from 1,600 cities just walked out of school to protest climate change. It could be Greta Thunberg's biggest strike yet. And she, that's what she's been calling on. Young people, strike, go on strike, protest for climate change. We've always had climate change. You ain't had somebody push the climate change like this. 
You got a young girl, 16 years old, that's been going around the world. You know, so, I mean, I'm telling you, this is big. It's real big. May 24th is the last chance to affect the EU elections. What's EU? European, European Union. Union. Politicians are talking about the climate and environmental issues more now, but they need more pressure, she says. She's voting across the European Union takes place May 23rd, May 26th, just last week, where the 751 representatives of European Parliament will be elected by citizens across the continent. Recent polling suggests environmental issues and policies Tackling climate change are high on the agenda for voters considering who to elect. They are threatening politicians with, we won't vote you. We will not vote you in, these younger people, if you don't follow what we're asking, or what we're doing here for climate change. You get enough people doing that, politicians will change their attitude because they don't want to lose the vote. This is big. It's moving across the planet. Here's Greta herself. This is the latest school climate strike inspired by teenager Greta Thunberg, who has become a global figurehead since protesting outside Sweden's parliament in 2018. The young people are demanding politicians take urgent action to avoid catastrophic ecological breakdown. Globally, organizers said that hundreds of protests also took place in the U.S. I didn't, hear, I didn't see that on the news. Not our news. On Friday, Thunberg and leading youth strikers across the world called for all adults to join the protest and stage a global general strike. Guess what? On my birthday. September 20th, this year. Another strike, and this is going to be bigger than the one that just happened. And ask yourself, look at this. Where did Greta get her start? Sweden's parliament. And I... I mean, a little personal note is climate change. This event right here is going to bring about the Sunday law. Climate change is a hoax. It is a hoax. Well, we're going to get into that too in just a minute. What country is neutral politically and religiously? Isn't it Switzerland? It's supposed to be. Right over there. She got her start in Sweden. This will come up later because where she got her start, where did the end of Protestantism die after 500 years, according to the Pope? Right there in Sweden. Is that a coincidence? So was there a strike before they crucified Christ? What did they do? They protested, didn't they? Didn't they all come together? Crucify him, crucify him. Protesting, maybe holding signs. We don't know, but they were doing the same thing. And Christ was crucified. And I just made another note. This has nothing to do with today. But it's just what's going on in the world. The Vision Church in Atlanta. You ought to look that one up. The Vision Church in Atlanta. I'll just mention it briefly. Openly gay pastor. Okay? I'm not against them doing and choosing what they want to do, but it's not godly. It's against the word. But openly gay pastor hires, guess who he hires for that church? A medium. So the parishioners can talk to their dead loved ones. Oh my goodness. I mean, where are we going? What does the Bible say about mediums? I mean, it's all over the Bible. You stay away from them. Stay away from them or you die. Straight up. I don't have I didn't put the scriptures down when it's in there. It's 
School children going to strike across the world over climate crisis. Writing in the Guardian, they said, we're asking adults to step up alongside us today. So many of our parents are busy discussing whether our grades are good or new diet or the Game of Thrones finale while the planet burns, they write. But to change everything, we need everyone. It is time for all of us to unleash mass resistance. If we demand change in numbers, we have a chance. I tell you, it's getting big. Getting big. I made another note. The sea and the waves roaring. Physically and symbolically, as we mentioned, the people. The roaring. Peoples and multitudes. There's your water in, in, in prophecy. Peoples and multitudes. And you ask, are they roaring? Yes. Absolutely they're roaring. Who met with Greta lately? Who met with her lately? Let me take this off of... Uh, who met with Greta? Lately? I'm going to bring up another screen in just a minute. <laughs> the Pope met with Did her. He? Yes. Yes, right. Yeah, I mean, now you know where I'm going. The papacy, the Pope, met with her. And the following picture also. So I'm going to go back to the picture. I just want to say hey to everybody while I'm up here since you hadn't seen me much. But I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm speaking. It's live. So back to the PowerPoint. All right. Now look at her meeting with the Pope. Pope Francis tells teenage climate activists to carry on, fight. Got a little note at the bottom here, listen to this. John Paul II would probably have told her and her fellow protesters to get back to school. Think about that. He probably would have. Francis ain't no John Paul. But Pope Francis encouraged Swedish teenage activist Greta Thunberg, 16 years old, figurehead of the International School Strike for Climate campaign, to carry on. How busy must we be in this work of God? How busy should we be spreading this news? So people, they got, they're blind. Let me go back to me. <laughs> Sure, I got a question for you. May can, I ask a question? Can, can you wait? Yes, sir. We'll talk afterwards so okay, I can. Yes, sir. Okay, gotcha. <clears throat> Keep your thought, though. Yes, sir. Hey, don't forget it. Keep your thought. Yes, sir. Okay, hey again. All right. How busy must we be? We should be spreading the gospel, right? Yes, we should sir. be preaching these things. Yes. We should teach and show people what's going on in the world because they're so caught up marrying drinking, Party. all those things the Old Testament said that we would be, and also the New Testament said we would be in the As end the days. days As the days of Noah. Go ahead and tell them they ain't going to believe you. <laughs> Some will. Some, if they can see the current events and associate them with what's going on, some will. Many do not know what they are doing, just like in the crucifixion of Christ. They didn't realize it because after that crucifixion, many repented and come to the Lord after the fact. Acts, that's Acts chapter 2 and 3. You can read that. So Daniel 2. We'll move forward to Daniel 2 because now this was all in Revelation 6 through 12. Now, I'm going to kind of jumpstart this thing into Daniel 2 with our scripture reading today that we had. When Daniel and Revelation are truly studied, there will be a great religious revival in the church. When they're truly studied for what they are and what it says, there will be a revival. People will come to see this, and the current events are going to draw them there. But keep an eye up, because we're getting ready to move into this and focus on Europe and America. America when it hit, America's going to be hit last. Right now, we're going to be focused on Europe. Look at this. Let me get back. I go back to the pictures. Oh, 
Oh, I forgot to mention is look at this. I know I've probably shown this in some of the past sermons, but uh, and I missed this one. But Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day which heals our relationships with God, with ourselves, with others, and with the world. It, Sunday, protects human action from becoming empty activism. It, meaning Sunday, also prevents that unfettered greed and sense of isolation which make us seek personal gain to the de de detriment of all else. The law of weekly rest forbade work on the seventh day. Rest opens our eyes to the larger picture and gives us renewed sensitivity to the rights of others. And so the day of rest, centered on the Eucharist, sheds its light on the whole week and motivates us to greater concern for nature and poor. Now, what does he call the Sabbath? He calls it the Sabbath in here, but he also calls it the Lord's Day, right? The Bible's totally against that. The Lord's Day in the Bible is a Sabbath, and it's Saturday, the seventh day, why we're here today. The Sunday law is coming. Now, we get up to Daniel 2. As you see, we got this, the statue that Nebuchadnezzar built. Gold, silver, bronze, and iron, and then clay mixed with iron. Or iron mixed with clay. Keep myself in order. So what is the last event that you see here before Jesus returns? The stone coming, the stone coming without hands. And smites the image. But before all that happens, there will be mingling. Let me turn back to Daniel 2. I might even have it back up. I'm not sure if I put it back up here or not. I did. Daniel 2, 41 through 43. It reads, The miry clay and the nations and the churches mingling. The miry churches. Miry clay means the Churches, people, the weak ones. Who's the strong one? Who's the iron? Papacy. Vatican. Let's read it again. Daniel 2, 41 through 43. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of, part of, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with the miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Mingling compromise, the title of this sermon today. Mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave. What does cleave mean? It's united, it's like marriage. But they shall not cleave. They will mingle, but they shall not cleave one to another. Even as iron is not mixed with clay. They're there together, but they're not going to marry as one. Verse 44, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain. And the interpretation thereof is sure. It will happen. And is this going on now, all this mingling? Everything trying to get people to join together. Protestants, Catholicism, all of us coming together, they're all compromising. I don't want to hurt their feelings. I don't want to stand for the principle of truth. I'll, I'll wave that a little bit just to... Ask yourself these questions. Look at things not just, just physically or 
materialistically, but spiritually. Look through the spiritual eyes. Let's see what I got next. Oh, here we are in Britain, Miss Deborah. Now this one, what's the date on this one? June 24, 2016. Just kind of give you an idea of what's going on over there. Because they, they all brought together the EU, right? Brexit. Brexit. What is Brexit, Deborah? They want to come out of the common market. Britain's exit. See, Deborah's from England. They wanted to come out of the EU. Britain's, I'll get a little bit deeper in this in a minute, but here we got the Prime Minister, Cameron. He quits. He quits. You ought to ask that man why he quit. And the other one just did. But then in the EU over there in, in Britain, it's also about the courage. And I know also that they, they, they didn't agree with that uh, euro because it used to be the... Well, yeah, let's hold off on that so I can keep going. Okay, okay we'll talk. Okay. UK's Theresa May resigns, acknowledging failure to, failure to deliver Brexit. May 24th, last week. They don't want nothing to do with that EU stuff. They can see it. They can see what's going on. What is so significant? Do this. Let me switch back. What is so significant of this happening and, and the prime ministers wanting to get out of the EU, European Union? What do you think that is? You know, because a lot of things happened over there back in the 300 years ago or so, before this country was come together as a, as a free country. You don't think they think back in their history, they can see what's going on? They know the wickedness going on. They know. As it relates to Daniel 2, the mingling. Remember the strength of the iron and the clay? And I might have jumped the gun here because I'm going to come back to it later. But don't you think that they look back and see when they seen the Vatican for what the Vatican is? And they kind of come in and pull that freedom of, of conscience. Trying to make you do this for this. Laying it all out there. It's a chess game. It's a chess game. I'll come back to that as well. How do we connect prophecy in these current events? And we're getting ready to go to this. Do any of us? I didn't know until I got into this. Does anyone know who brought the EU together? I didn't know this until I dug into it. And what the original name was? Probably Bauer. Hang on, it's coming. Boris Johnson, UK. Oh, I left that one out, didn't I? He lives in the UA also. Deal or no deal. In October, he left. Sets out headline Brexit stance after Theresa May resigns. Her resignation. In October. I mean, people are seeing things over there in Europe. Here it is. Question I just asked. Where the, what brought the EU together? Let's read it. The Treaty of Rome. Officially, the treaty establishing the European Economic Community is an international agreement that led to the founding of the European Economic Community on January 1st, 1958. It was signed on 25th of March, 1957 by Belgium, France, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, West Germany, the word economic was deleted from the treaty's name by the Maastricht Treaty in 1992, and the treaty was repackaged as a treaty on the functioning of the European Union on the entry into force of the Treaty of Lisbon in 2009. Portugal. Okay, I know who's behind that. P Portugal. Earthquake in Portugal. I mean, you get According to Article 1 of the current treaty, of Maastricht. 
The European Union is the successor of the European community. The Treaty of Rome. Let's see if I should see if I should go there yet. So what we've seen was the EU is a successor of the European Economic Community. And as we know now, the originally established the European community was the papacy or the Vatican. Oop. Second witness from The Economist. Real politics at last. Finally, there is a pan-European debate, but it may not help the EU. This is October 28th. It's been some years back, but things have been going on. They've been really trying to push this for years, but they... People have been battling against it. Among the roots of British wariness, not weariness, wariness, aware, they're, they're seeing what they see, they're aware, wariness of the European Union, according to the late Hugo Young, was suspicion that it was all a Catholic conspiracy orchestrated from the Vatican. That prejudice, the writer maintained, was held by many prominent Britons including Margaret Thatcher. Witness number two. And I'll put a note here, 2004, in this secondary sense, secondary to this, Britain is the clay, the weak, and EU is the iron, being established by the Vatican, the papacy. Witness number three, Vatis, Vatican insider inquiries and interviews, symbolism of the EU flag. You got the flag. I hope I'm showing this, yes. We got the flag. How many stars? Twelve stars. Mary? Twelve stars. And what do the twelve stars represent? overhead of Mary and the EU flag, far from it. The symbol of Europe was conceived by a Catholic and tomorrow for the first time the statue of the Our Lady of Fatima will be carried past the EU Parliament building. The symbol of Europe, below in the red, the symbol of Europe was conceived by a Catholic and tomorrow for the first time the statue of Our Lady of Fatima will be carried past the EU Parliament building. Our Lady of Fatima comes to Strasbourg the 12 stars on the EU flag are a homage to Mary. And yet, this will be her first visit to the political headquarters of the EU. Her first visit. Homage to Mary. That flag, the EU flag, is a homage to Mary. So whom is the EU nation being consecrated to? The EU is being consecrated to Mary. So whose flag are they marching under then? The Vatican. It's the Vatican flag. It's not the European flag. How many countries make up the EU? 28. 28. And I don't have that up there. 28. Austria, Belgium, Bulgaria, Croatia, Croatia, Republic of Cyprus, Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Hungary, Ireland, Italy, uh, Latvia, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Malta, Netherlands, Poland, Portugal, <coughs> Romania, Slovakia, Slovenia, Spain, Sweden, and UK. And now we got, that was Europe. Where's Brazil? Not in Europe. It's not in Europe, is it? You're getting close. South America. It's Brazilian president signs proclamation consecrating nation, nation, the whole nation, to Virgin Mary. On Tuesday, Brazil was consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary in a ceremony that included President Jair Bolsonaro and Bishop Fernando. Arias Refine. The consecration of Brazil, which has more Catholics than any other country, 
to the Virgin Mary was an initiative of National Deputy Eros Biodini and Brazil's Catholic Parliament Parliamentary Front to ask for divine protection and in reparation for sin. We are doing this for Brazil for our love for our nation. Biodini was reported as saying, a statue of the Virgin Mary, which depicts her as she appeared to child visionaries in Fatima, Portugal. Portugal again. Was at the ceremony and will remain in a place of honor in the presidential palace. The whole country, Catholic or non-Catholic, it don't matter. The whole country. But what do we say about Mary? Where's Mary? Where is Mary? In the grave. In the grave. The dead know nothing. She's sleeping and waiting on the Lord's return, just as we are. There's only three and a few others that the Bible says went straight to heaven. Enoch, Moses, Elijah, and those that were resurrected when Jesus, with Jesus at his crucifixion, the graves were opened, and then when he ascended, they ascended. Six, seven hundred of them. Bible mentions no others. No others. And it's pretty plain. The dead know nothing. And they're waiting on the resurrection. Why would there be a resurrection? We all know because the Spirit of God goes into the body. It becomes a living soul. We'll talk about it later, James. We'll have to talk about it later. Okay. Starts off right there in the beginning. Starts off with the first lie from Satan. You think about those things. Satan lies and says, no, you live forever. They still they teaching it today. Can't get into that because that's not the sermon today. People just, they, they take it so far out of context, it's, it's just unbelievable. Revelation says there will be a remnant. What does that mean? Very few. Look who's here today. A remnant in the end days will follow and be commandment-keeping people and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. A remnant. Remnant's a very last little bit. It won't be the world following after Christ. They'll be following after the beast. What scripture would you use to show that Mary is no... Well, I, I can go there. Luke. <laughs> we don't need to go there. I just went through that. Well, I'm still up there. Sorry for nobody being able to see me preach today, but uh, I'm gonna, I, got, I, mean, I think y'all will get a lot of Bible study time with a lot of this stuff. Luke 11, 27 through 28, And it came to pass as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the paps which thou hast sucked. Now this is talking about Mary. And what did Jesus, this is Jesus speaking. But he said, Yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. He didn't say his mother was blessed. He said those that keep the word of God are more blessed than she. In that one couple verses right here. Luke 11, 27 and 28. Somebody wants to talk about Mary being old, blessed Mary, we go take them to that verse. If they believe in scripture, there it is. Where was the Lisbon earthquake? Portugal comparing to the last sentence to, let's see, last sentence in Pick Fatima. I'll uh, make sure I get in the right place. Another picture from Brazil. Let me see where I'm at. Okay, that's the Brazilian president again. Oh, you'll love this. Participants at the ceremony included various high-level politicians as well as representatives of various Catholic movements. According to Biodini, this is a simple gesture of faith and love, which is a great important is of great importance not only for Catholics, but for all of Brazil. Much like Bolsonaro, Italy's deputy premier, Matteo Salvini, dedicated his country to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. May 18th, at a rally attended by tens 
of thousands of devotedly Catholic Savini held up a rosary and kissed it. Looking up at a statue of the Virgin Mary atop the Cathedral of Milan, he said, I entrust Italy, my life, and your lives to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, who I'm sure will bring us to victory. Where did Jesus go? Where did Jesus go? And I ask y'all out there, where did Jesus go? He is changing to heaven. Yeah, where is he in our lives, according to the Brazilian? Well, how come he doesn't mention Jesus? Why is it all about Mary? They trusted in Mary. He trusts his whole life and everything in Mary. Well, guess what? His life's going to be real short. Well, you know what the book said about Jesus? I don't know what he says about Jesus. He said Jesus is the son of Satan. Oh, there is an article on that somewhere. But I'm not getting into that right now. I gotta stay stay focused here. All right, I'm gonna go back to PowerPoint, I think. See where I'm at. Okay, we're still discussing Daniel 2, iron and clay, mingling together, spiritual, politicians, religion, all this is mingling together. Know when you see this, we are close. And this is my own words. The winds will be let go soon. Angels are holding the four corners, right? They will let go soon. It's coming. And the close of human probation and God's people sealed. And then the coming of our Lord. That's basically the step. They'll let go of the winds. Things will happen. God's people will be sealed and he will return times we don't truly know but we can see what's going on we know it's getting close and now that I've done described it I put a definition of Brexit in here in case I had to look at it but after I after I read it I'm like of course Britain's exiting EU makes sense the reason there's here's my note I tried to say earlier off the top of my head in the root of Britain or or many believe that the EU was established by the Vatican to remove liberty of conscience and national interest. That's the main reason of them leaving. But I'm sure there's others too. That's not at the top of the list. Nobody wants their freedom taken, but we keep moving in the path that this place is going. People have given up our Freedom to choose. It's already slowly being done. Or securities. People want security more than they want freedom. Security, security, security. And it's coming. And just so like communism trying to come in. Yes. Communism that, coming in. It's like communism. Well, it is. It is. Whether it's socialism, communism, same kind of thing. You're kind of told what you got to do and what you can do. Then the EU flag is under Mary. Vatican, Brazil, concentrated Catholics and non-Catholics to Mary. As we just read, the EU flag, the 12 stars above Mary is the reason that flag was made, the Vatican flag. The EU flag is not the EU flag. It is the EU flag, but it's truly the Vatican flag. So let's talk about America. You ready for our country? Let's see what's going on with this one. Go back to the pictures. All right, National Catholic Prayer Breakfast here is called for Catholic Great Awakening. Didn't Protestants have a Great Awakening? Did they take the name from that and turn it into Catholic Great Awakening? I'm telling you. It's in front of your noses. The United States has experienced ebbs and flows in religious devotion before and has seen two Great Awakenings among Protestants that resulted in renewed faith for believers? Perhaps, said Martin, this is what the church in America needs. Of course it does, but it needs to be Protestants. True Protestants. Wouldn't it be great, a great time for a Catholic great awakening? That ought to tell you something. Anybody knows anything about history? Also among those speakers to address the pro-life cause was acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney. Mulvaney? Mulvaney, is that how you pronounce his name? Mulvaney? 
The principles of our Catholic faith are alive and well and well respected in this administration and are driving many of our policies. Now, let me, this is Mulvaney said. Let me ask you this again. Let me read this one more time. The principles of our, him, Catholic faith are alive and well in this well respected and well respected in this Trump administration. And are driving many of our policies. It's got all around them. There ain't no Protestants no more. And even if there are Protestants, they're not protesting. And right now, this is about pro life. Look at this. This says pro life. So, what's going to happen when it comes to the Sunday law? And they're sneaking away. It's a chess game. Step by step by step, thinking 10 steps ahead, making this one so this happens. I'm not a real big conspiracy theorist, but you can see it. Plain as day, if you know a little history, it don't take a lot of history knowledge to see what's happening here. Catholicism and Protestantism, they were at war. Catholicism killed so many Protestants, it's not funny. You can't even count them. And now they've changed. The world says, oh, they've changed. But yeah, the people, they're just dumb. They don't see it. The higher-ups, they know what's going on. The problem isn't the people. It's never against the Catholic denomination people, the people in their pulp, in the pews. It's about the higher-ups that are deceiving people with their traditions and the ways of teachings. Because they're not teaching the Bible. To teach. They may mention a few verses here and there, but they're not teaching. It's the same way in schools, too. Yeah. Next picture. Oh, this is from Ellen White's Review and Herald, 1897. Roman Catholic principles will be taken under the care and protection of the state. What did that just say? The principles of our Catholic faith are alive and well in, in this well-respected Trump administration. It don't say Trump, but it's this administration. April 23rd, 2019. That's when he said this. Roman Catholic principles will be taken under the care and protection of the state. Politics and religion coming together like you've never seen it before. Well, who finances the, the Vatican? The Catholics? Yes. Who, finance, who finances them? Their selves. They stole like gold all over. I mean, the banking system. You want to call it that? Federal Reserve System. The Rothschilds. Well, you, well, you put Federal Reserve System, you'll see all those names. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's backed. It's backed. There's no question about it. And also in Italy, in the, in the Rome, Italy, they had the first uh, Mason woman there back then, where back then, I think it was around 18 something that there was the first Freemason. Woman, well, you can get into all that too, but I'm not going into all that. There's a lot more details. Well, let me go because I gotta get through this. Common good. I wasn't ready to go there yet. I don't think. I might as well. So let's. I'll leave that up, and I'll just speak this. So we have the EU controlled, Vatican controlled. Then we have South America, Brazil, Vatican control. And now we are seeing Vatican control in this country, our country, North America. The old world, a new world's coming. Will America form an image to the papacy? Haven't been Adventist teachings been teaching that for years? Common good has become global. Common good has become global. This picture here. No write-up on it. It was just a picture. The Pope Francis says the common good has become global. It's becoming more global. So here we are. Europe, South America, North America being governed by Vatican policies, principles, and dogmas. 
But what about Africa, Asia, Australia? What about them? Then all you got to say is most of the countries in the world kind of follow the pace of America, the free country, Australia. They'll all, if America, when America goes, they're going to follow. The Brexit, if America goes, Britain's probably going to follow all the way too. Going to lead. That's that's the whole deal. America is basically the decision maker. If America would stand ground and boot this out of the country and start where we started back in the 17th century, we wouldn't be talking about this right now. But God's got his ways and he's in control. He's got people in high ups and politicians and and spiritual service everywhere. But USA, America, does have indirectly much clout in those countries. And we say all the world will wonder after, after the beast. But first, follow the image of the beast. Because nations follow America's lead. The dates on the pictures, you can see, they kind of were chronolo chronologically ordered where things started happening back and still being pushed over the past 20 years. Not even 20, 15, 15 years. The common good in 1888 when Sunday Law, A.T. Jones, any of us that read Ellen White's writings, Common good in 1888 when Sunday Law was coming under the common good. This picture here. And for, the, for what purpose is the limitation sought to be put upon natural rights? A quotation from the recent hearing on the Sunday bills. This is 1888. Before the Massachusetts legislature will explain. A speaker in behalf of the Sunday bill said, When we speak of natural rights, it must be with limitations. Natural rights of the individual in the community are subordinate to the common good. Sabbath laws, Sunday laws, it says Sabbath laws, but it meant Sunday laws, have been proved to be for the common good. Let's see how many pictures I got here. But the common good is becoming global. Pope's saying it. And it truly is as you look at the current news events. Nations are being primed to bring in the Sunday law and then make it a legal holiday. Civil law interfering with our moral law to God. What will happen if we decide not to bow to that Sunday law or give in? On Sundays and other holy days of obligation, believers must refrain from engaging in work or activities that hinder the worship owed to God, the joy proper to the Lord's day. Public authorities have the duty to ensure that for reasons of economic productivity, citizens are not denied time for rest and divine worship. Employers have an uh, analogous obligation regarding their employees. Christians in respect of religious freedom and of the common good of all should seek to have Sundays and the church's holy days recognized, this is the key, as legal holidays. They have to give everyone a public example of prayer, respect, and joy, and defend their traditions, traditions as a precious contribution to the spiritual life of society. This is all basically materialistic. If they would look through the spiritual eyes, they would see this. Legal holidays. They're going to call the Sunday law a legal holiday. It's going to become a civil law. No longer a freedom of conscience of a choice that we should have. It's going to go back to the same thing. The Father... Oh, receiving... Charlemagne Prize. Pope says, I have a dream for Europe. He received this prize. And what is that prize? He is a called the father of Europe. 
In red, the church also has a role to play in this regard through her mission of proclaiming the gospel and binding the wounds of humanity. Francis said, adding that the effort Christians put toward full unity is a great sign of the times and a response to the Lord's prayer that they may all be one. If truth and error mix, you can all be one. Guess what you're going to have? You're going to have error. You're going to have good and poison together. So now, after what we've talked about, mother is now Mary, right? Mary is her mother, and the Pope is her father. Based on this, right? Based on, based on all the current events. There's a reason I don't like that. <laughs> compare, it, but compare that. Mary is your mother. The Pope is the father. The fifth commandment. What's the fifth commandment? Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land. If not, you're going to be killed. Wow. Yeah, I added to that. Mm-hmm. What about this honor? Thy pope, your father, and Mary, thy mother, that thy days be long upon the land or be persecuted and die dead, killed. So, so... Hmm. Think about that. All this news, you can see it. Mary the mother. Pope now living, awarded this father of Europe. Man, there's so many that call him father in the Holy See. Oh, boy. Daniel 2.42, partly strong, partly broken. Brexit. Results signals that the system is broken. They know it's broken. Now the Pope wades into Brexit row. Francis wants Britain to stay in EU. See, sees them trying to get out. They trying to get. They're trying to run out of there. The Pope's begging now. Come back to us. Come back to us. What's the Protestants doing? What's the daughters doing? You look in Revelation. You know there's uh, the seven churches. The daughters, the mother church. What do they call themselves? A mother church? You know, hang on a minute. Let me get to, I'll forget. Forget to do this. All right. <laughs> the mother church and the daughters. And I preached on this a couple times ago, and I mentioned a couple things about the daughters coming back to the mother church. The Protestant Churches are running right back to her. And now Britain, the Brexit, the Pope, you see this, begging the nation, come on, don't don't leave, don't leave. I don't know what the future holds on that decision. Hopefully they won't because they said the Bible, they don't mix. No, they don't. And hopefully, now I got a note here as well. Pope wants Britain to stay in the EU. Mingle and join the one world government. What will they be doing just before Christ establishes his kingdom, though, we ask? Mingling, partly strong and partly broken. So the mingling, they're, they're, they are, we're right there. And those verses coming down, right through that, that statue, and, and the gold, the bronze, I mean the gold, silver, bronze, and iron, and st- we are right there. I mean, I tell you, you're talking about the times of the times. Protestants, the reformers. That's what I think is in Britain's mind. As they as they're trying to make this exit from the EU. They know they they, they got the history lessons in their country. You probably Deborah could tell you probably taught that in school, right? They have all the torture things. They have they all have of them. The they got museums and all the torture houses. things, statues around, they see them. So you can't you go down you, in the Oh, you can't help but see them. So in England, you can see those things that happened in the past. Yeah, the things that they use, Deborah says, they're, they're all over. You can see them. You can't walk, by, you know, walk around and not see them, right? So that, that's in their mind. There's some trickery going on here, some deception in the, in the, in the church. 
is trying to draw us into this one world unity of, of peace. And what does the Bible say? Peace, peace. There ain't no peace. If they're calling out and screaming, peace, peace, let's be peace. Not in this little world. It will not be. Not in this world. They can see the Vatican control of Britons. Just as in the spiritual is the natural, civil, and government spheres. Just as the Protestants left Rome and are going back, and now Britain is being called back, which I was just talking about. Now the Pope is saying, come back. But they may mingle, but someone is going to make sure that they do not cleave. And who's going to be that person? Jesus Christ is going to make sure they do not cleave. Because I tell you what, if he gave it enough time, enough time. So we're, we're saying, you know, if, if, he, if, if he didn't come back when he did, or when he will, there wouldn't be nothing left to say. So who's controlling the cleaving? Yeah, he's going to allow the mingling because he's still calling us to come to him. He's calling that remnant. And we're that remnant. We are a remnant here today. I can see it. Oop, picture. Go, let me switch back. I'm making this long as slow as I am. I'm sorry about that. Now the Pope wades into Brexit Row. Francis wants Britain. I did I already show that one. I showed that one, right? You're begging for the return. And I just went over that. The Reformation should have been a warning to remainers. And this is Cameron. We just talked about Cameron and Theresa May, right? If David Cameron understood the causes and progress of the English Reformation, he would have realized the appeal of very well then alone. They took it for granted that votes would be cast according to a calculation of whether membership of the European Union or withdrawal offered England the most prosperous future. But inhabitants of this fortress built by nature do not live by GDP alone. Many of them have an ingrained belief in national sovereignty. England is at its best, the argument runs, when it is neither governed nor influenced by decisions taken in what Shakespeare called less happier lands. Whatever the reason Elizabeth determined, when possible, to eliminate Catholicism from her realm, and where elimination was not possible, to suppress it, the spirit of the age was articulated in the works of Shakespeare, which in turn influenced the English vision of England for the next 500 years. Naught shall make us rue if England to itself do rest be true, rest but true. It might have been the battle cry of Bre Brexiters. The idea it embodied certainly helped them to win, this is key, win the referendum campaign. They didn't vote for the uh, EU. They, they, they won the referendum, all the, the Brexiters, is what it's saying. And now they're begging to try to keep them in. And what we just read, just Elizabeth eliminated, eliminated, this is Queen Elizabeth, eliminated Catholicism years, years ago. The Brexiters, nothing to do with the Vatican, want nothing to do with the Vatican or the policies that govern the EU. The kingdom come. John 18, 36, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Not of this world. Definitely not of this world. There's so many here just talking about that the kingdom is not here. There's many verses. I'll just call them out. Hebrews 11, 8 through 10. Not of this world. This is about the kingdom where the real kingdom is. I was going to read through these, but I've already been quite a while on, on this and going kind of long. But uh, if you want to make notes, the kingdom is not of this world. Not God's kingdom. But the Vatican's trying to build one and calling it peace. Peace. Hebrews eleven sixteen. 16.
But now they desire a better country that is and heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God for he hath prepared to them for them a city. All this is about the kingdom in heaven. Matthew 6, 10. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 4, 8 through 10. Matthew 4, 8 through 10. Here's where the devil tempted Christ. And what was the words of Christ? Thou shalt worship thy Lord thy God and him and thou shalt thou serve. But the devil was offering kingdom here. He said, no, no. So what should we do? That's Matthew 4, 8 through 10. Hebrews 11, 13 through 15. These all died in faith, not having received the promises. They didn't receive them here. This is what this is about. They didn't receive them here. They died. They waiting for them to receive them when they, that time comes. And truly, if they, let's see, for if they say such things, declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. The, th the throne of grace and the throne of glory. There's only one. Let's just read. Let's, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hebrews 4.16 now Matthew 25, 31 and 32, When the Son of Man shall come in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory. And before Him shall be gathered all nations, and He shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth the sheep and the goats. He will separate the righteous from the unrighteous. No, oh, it's about all the bad stuff, right? All the iniquities. Titus 2, 11 through 15, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, te teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. I mean... Throw out the iniquities that we live, what we do, with the choices, some of the bad choices we make. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. Holy conversation. And the holy convocations. Pastor used to talk about the convocation. A gathering and worshiping and praising God. New heavens, new earth. I mean, and this little thing in red. We need to think spiritually. This is it. We need to think spiritually. The world can only think materialistic. If you're in the world, that's what you think of. My clothes, my food, my house, my work, all those things, that's materialistic. But we need to primary thing needs to be spiritual thinking as we do that the other things just fall in place this world is not our home people are thirsty hungry and naked the only thing that will truly suffice is the living word this is Matthew 25 35 through 36 for I was in hunger and you gave me meat I was thirsty and you gave me drink I was a stranger and you took me in Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. And right there he's talking to the people of then. If you're materialistic, you'll see this as clothes, food, home, all the materialistic things. But if you think spiritually, like he's trying to get them to think, for I was hungered and you gave me the word. And you gave me meat. The word, all of those things. I was thirsty. You gave me the word. You gave me him. You gave me Jesus Christ. And all the other things, the material things, come with that. But the word is the most is the is the peace thing, the one that gives you inner peace. His word. Well, 
Well, I didn't have the, I, I had it on me the whole time, didn't I? No, you just put it back. Oh, it was, it was on PowerPoint? Yeah. Okay. Well, I wanted to switch it there. All right, let's see what I got. See if I got anything else on my notes that I may have left off in here. Nope. We are in prison here. We really are. That's under bondage. There's a lot of current events that I've brought up today. So I hope everybody takes it to heart and starts, you know, watch the news, look at things that are happening and compare them to what the Bible says. I mean, if you look at that, you will see things coming together for our Christ soon coming. Because He is coming. So, let's close in prayer. Father God, thank You so much. A little lengthy today, I think. It's pretty warm in here. But I thank You so much for the Word is a blessing. And the truth and principles to come out so that we can see with our spiritual eyesight. So we can see what's going on. We can see truth and error, Father God. And I pray that you will fill the hearts and minds of those here and those online. That they will be filled with a, with a new uh, focus. With their spiritual eyesight. That they will see the things of the world and what's happening. So that because popularity and the popular vote goes one way doesn't mean that it's right. So fill our hearts and fill our minds to see the difference and stand for the principle of the only truth in your word. In Jesus, your only begotten Son. Amen. Thank you, everybody. We're going to call it a week. And uh, join us next week. Pastor Houston will be back. And uh, maybe some more people will show up next week as well. So the remnant...